Commission. Today is Wednesday, October 24th, 2018. It is 8 o'clock. We are in City Hall, room 604. Roll call. Kent Hutchison, I am here. Vice Chair Alex Zacharias. Here. Alden Randy Scandal. Present. Matt Buchanan. Here. Tiffany Bull. Here. Okay, and then our liaisons, we have Stacey Minx. Here. Beth Lemke will not be able to join us today. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Is there a motion to approve the minutes from September 26th? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. So, first regular business item, refer back from August 22nd, 2018, meeting discussion with possible action on approving the new logo design for the Green Bay Public Arts Commission. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak on this? Very good. I'd like to open the phone. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. Okay, the floor is open. If you'd like to come have a seat, you can state your name and address, please. Full name. Matt Van Boomen, 600 James Street, apartment 108. Very good. Okay, so Matt has been working tirelessly on coming up with the new logo for the GBPAC. So, um, and we had some <coughs> suggestions from, from last time. What, what do you have for us today, Matt? Um, well, I had listened to the meeting mm -hmm. that uh, kind of just, you guys were discussing that, and I heard a couple of things come up, so I just have a couple slides. Perfect. To kind of reset to make sure that. Uh, Looks like we need new Java. Mm -hmm. We'll oh. ignore that for now. Hello. All right. So, I mean, by the way. can you give a little background about yourself? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, I. Oh, this is updating. Sorry, guys. Oh, sorry. Right. sorry. Um, this is all it's part quick. of the presentation. Three. <laughs> Grew up in uh, Green Bay. Here, I went to UWGB. Okay. Got my design arts degree. Okay. There. Um, I got hired at a local agency before I graduated here. Um, Wild Blue is here. Okay. Um, there, I've been working with not only Fortune 500 companies, but a lot of local companies. Mm -hmm. So on the identity side, I've worked with brands like Kimberly Clark, the Hershey Company. Sure. And then locally here, if you guys remember Title Town Brewery. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> identity redo. I was part of that team. Okay. Um, the cannery. You know, Stella's and Papier, mm -hmm. um, also the Appleton Harley Davidson dealership. Cool. So, definitely have a little bit of experience in mm -hmm. doing this. And like I said, I was talking to Laura. I found you guys. Um, really like the mission and want to be part of it. And doing a little bit of an audit of your current identity, I thought um, could maybe use a little bit of cleaning up. Okay. And great. I uh, looking at wanting to join you guys in some capacity. I thought this would be a good way to introduce myself. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I can I can say that uh, we do have somewhat of an identity issue. Not a lot of people know about us, um, and like getting our name out there and promoting is something that we're continually looking at doing better at. So we are open to any suggestions that you may have about how we can do better at that. Um, cool. So, I think we're ready to roll here. Yeah, so I just have this guy starting out. Um, I kind of heard that you guys were saying that you really want a mark that shows um, shows an artistic flair to it to be able to represent, you know, the artistic nature of the Public Arts Commission. Um, I don't know if any of you guys recognize this logo or not, but um, if you want to advance that, this is actually Apple's first logo wow. that they ever created. Um, so I go, the reason I show this is, you know, this was a kind of a an idea to show Newton under the tree with the apple and that whole, you know, it's a very artistic photo. It looks like an etching and everything, but in reality, um, using this and stamping this on the back of iPhones and on the back of you know, computers this is actually a really expensive, you know, way to show your identity and it's really hard to translate. If you think about like employees at an Apple store to have this screen printed mm -hmm. you know, on the corner of their shirt <coughs> once it gets small, you have readability issues. So that's why they went with a simple mark. 
Simple is better. Right, exactly. And so um, they're able to, you know, reap the benefits of, you know, reproducing that mark over and over again. And it's really a goal that you're trying to achieve is can people draw your mark from memory? Mm -hmm. That's kind of a good marker of, you know, if it's simple enough or not. Okay. So, going ahead here. Uh, I just pulled together a couple examples of logos from prominent art institutions. Mm -hmm. and you can see kind of from, you know, the mood board here that they really are simplistic. They do show creativity and artistic nature, but they don't try to overwhelm kind of their brand. Mm -hmm. And I just, in this example, just focus on the Asian Art Museum. And if you want to go to the next slide here, you can see how that simple mark, how that's able to translate across all things. So it's not the mark itself that's the artistic kind of representation. It's more that vehicle that lets you know that it's part of that museum. And they really let the artwork itself be the visual. So especially on that poster kind of example in the bottom left hand corner there. They let that art really be the visual and then you know that it's part of the Asian art museum right. with that little nice stamp in the corner that works small. So moving ahead here. So looking at your logo currently, um, just some things that um, I was able to identify if we go to that next slide just looking at how this logo reproduces itself. Um, found it on your Facebook page. You can see that since it was created a little bit longer than taller, mm -hmm. um, a lot of social media websites right now, they're either, they're either have a square spot or a circle spot. And if your logo doesn't fit in that, it automatically squishes it. Right. And so you can see right now, you guys have the logo where it's compressed in that area. And for an entity that is based on kind of visual language and stuff, it might not come across as the most professional use. Um, another thing with... Are you saying the logo sucks? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> not that. Definitely not that. <laughs> um, also, with if you look at the the example on the screen there, the green that's being used, that's a very vibrant um, kind of highlighter green. What um, colors, when you're reproducing them, they basically fall into two different realms. You have RGB color spectrum and you have the CMYK color spectrum. So RGB is normally used for screens, web kind of thing, and CMYK is used for printing. Hmm. So um, you have a certain amount of colors that are in the color spectrum for RGB, and then you have a certain amount of colors that are in the color spectrum for CMYK, and they don't completely overlap. So you have some colors that will only reproduce on the screen, and then once you bring them over to print, they're going to completely dull down, and you're not going to be able to get that color. So one of those that you're running into there is with that bright green. You can print that with CMYK, which is the standard for commercial printers, every home printer, but that's, what, that's the color spectrum that they use. So when you try to either print it or reproduce it, you're going to get a darker green that's not necessarily that green, so you're gonna have your logo show up. Looking differently. Looking differently across all different mediums. So that was definitely something to consider. Okay. Um, so moving ahead here, so this is uh, the mark that I was kind of working on, rationale behind it. It's ownable, confident. This option embodies the experimentation of all art forms. The mark's lack of a structured baseline communicates playfulness and approachability to the viewer. And then I created, then on the next slide, a little way of showing how that looks across all the different mediums. So whether it's large or small, even if you look on that Facebook example in the circle there, even though it's super, super tiny, you can still recognize mm -hmm. that logo. And it's, easy, it's easily to translate from you know, medium to medium. The colors stay consistent. 
so that'll help you out a lot, I believe. But mm -hmm. it's very philosophical. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> so, so that's the original one. So we're not changing that one at all, based on our right. I heard, right, okay. I heard um, about adding the Leo Frigo Bridge in there. Um, my apprehensions about that is kind of the metaphor that it sends. Uh, if you Google Leo Frigo Bridge, the entire first page is basically about how it was almost a the what biggest disaster in the state yeah. history. But that's also an icon for Green Bay's identity. It's easily relatable. Everyone knows it. I'm wondering, the true, like, I take your point. Um, I spoke with Matt a little bit about this yesterday, and um, we both, sorry, that Matt, not you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we were saying that we wish we had a really iconic art piece. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, a, bri a bridge is artistic, it's, but it's architectural. Mm -hmm. It's not really our realm. Mm -hmm. We're in the arts. Um, so if we had if we had a, like a super bang and art piece that people knew like that's Green Bay. Yeah. We don't have that yet, but I could see that something like this could have the potential that we could add that piece in there eventually once we find it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not unusual for, <coughs> for companies to go through transitions. Um, but uh, I think initially what we wanted to do was, speaking for myself, is to spell it out. Hey, here we are, Green Bay. You know, we literally put that information out there. Uh, and I guess now we're getting somewhat recognized. Um, and uh, I see this as a transition to, to that, you know. Um, it, it, I don't know if it's going to be fluid or a work in progress kind of thing. But I, I like the idea of uh, making a new transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've had this one for two years, the original one. I mean, you don't want to be changing it every two years necessarily, right. but um, yeah. other thoughts? What, uh, just one last thing. Mm -hmm. I do love uh, how Apple was able to create an actual symbol. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully we'll find that symbol as well. I think that's that kind of sums up my sticking point, I guess, because this is I, it gets the GBPAC out there, obviously, but it's there's no iconography really with it. Um, did anything pop out to you as potential icons for what we're doing? Yeah. Um, the only other reason that I'm apprehensive about that is. Icons don't take on meaning until they're tirelessly, you know, combined with that meaning. So if you think about an example like Target, that doesn't have an inherent meaning. Their logo of expect more, pay less. I can get fashion forward clothes for my family. Um, another example like the Y, their new logo. It's the letter Y it doesn't necessarily mean get healthy. Mm -hmm. We provide classes for the community. Um, for the Green Bay Public Arts Commission, I don't know if you have enough kind of steam right now to be able to take ownership of, of an icon, of an icon, even if it's of the bridge, mm -hmm. to be something that you know when someone sees an icon of the bridge that they know that that's Green Bay Public Arts Commission, and that might be a harder battle to win over. Okay, can you go back a few slides to those uh, that pad at the very beginning uh, with MoMA and all the other ones? Okay, so like MoMA, that one is, is not interesting to me. The arts, the Asian arts one, where it's kind of upside down, that's visually, you know, artistic you know in a way the momo one to me is not it's also the sam using negative space like those are all and they're not icons but there's they're still they're doing something i guess the 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 gbpac one i like it but i'm not so sure it tells me art either like it's it's, it's um it's our acronym but 
I guess when I saw it, no, it's just I can hear. <laughs> um, when I see this, um, so it's our acronym, but also the playfulness of the letters. I mean, you have some there up here, some there down there. It's spontaneous. It feels spunky. Mm -hmm. And outside art? of these meetings, I speak for you guys, and I think I'm spunky. <laughs> um, and also, I just I enjoy the difference in sizes of the letters. Um, I think it speaks, if you really want to dive into a logo and pick it apart and figure out like, well this means this, um, I mean you could reach for, the, it shows diversity just in the fact that it has different sizes and I know in some of those mock-ups that you made, some of the letters were even different colors and um, it doesn't like different shades of green for all of those letters. Um, I don't, even though we are the Public Arts Commission, I don't want us to get in a position where we have a logo that has a paintbrush or like a palette on it because we're not just visual arts, we're humanities, we're performing arts. Um, right. And that's a lot of stuff to try and symbol tear down it. into one symbol. But if you <coughs> took like the, um, the Asian arts, uh, flipping the A upside down, to me that's, that's, that's visually creative. What about what about if we flip the letter, made it the G or the B backwards or even the C, so well, it's turning on itself and it's like Pac-Man, it's eating the. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what what the Asian uh, <coughs> uh, did was they were they superimposed it and uh, <coughs> they used it as a vehicle, as you mentioned. So do you you would be able to see the art behind or in certain instances uh, they they superimposed it and you can see other art behind it right you know what I mean mm -hmm. so I like that potential of being able to um, have that background you know yeah, you, you, you can add yeah the flexibility of adding you know you think about it like a mural that you guys just recreated you know that that can turn into a stencil really mm -hmm. fast that you're able to automatically identify mm -hmm. you know, what who did that so, <coughs> so then that gives us a lot of space a lot of room to work with so so maybe we're talking about using the um, the one that, that Matt's bringing the, the logo as a stencil that we can we can you know embellish onto because um, if you go to the, the the logo as it is even the green I'm not crazy about but if we but if we were to say we were promoting some musical thing. Then we could some there's that. there could be symbolisms of that yeah. or paint or humanities whatever I think it has that flexibility so I do think it's clean and it looks it's relatable and so the other thing like in I think your last meeting you had talked to someone about uh, presenting a logo set you can put on a banner for an event and so like you typically see those where all the sponsors you know are on one page and so you have you know a local party of you know, 15 logos on there. So you would send your file over to them. They would have their layout, first and foremost layout, and it gets sent to a commercial printer where you're not quite sure if it's going to print in black and white or if it's going to print in color. Mm -hmm. So that goes back to making sure that that is, that that mark is flexible enough and that vehicle is able to take you where once you hand it off, you don't necessarily have full control of what that looks like. At the right. final final execution, and if you build that in the logo, that consideration when you're making that, you know that can prevent you know yeah. a mix up kind of down the line. Okay. Yeah. So this gets a little bit. Um. Those are yeah. Those are the <coughs> alternate color mock-ups, and then. Yeah. Totally uh, open to switching colors. Mm -hmm. That you know, little pamphlet that I hand out. That's actually from the. 630 concert series last night um, with our current logo printed in there. So that's how it comes out when it's just black and white. Right. Okay. I think it would be cool with like, uh, I know this is just one discipline of the public arts, but just like a, a paint on the background. We don't need to have a, like a paintbrush or anything like that. I think those 
icons are like definitely overused and cliche, but like I could see going through here and putting the uh, dropping different backdrops into this and making it a little bit more art, like making art come out. The idea of art, exactly, and that's that. That's kind of goes back to that notion of combining that mark with what your brand is and that's all those different art forms. And once you do that and you know, show the outside world those things, they'll automatically connect those two together and then you'll have more value in your brand. Okay. Thoughts? Any more thoughts before we make a decision on this? Well, what would you think of like flipping the C or the G or something or the B or something? Or it's got to have relevance though. Like I wonder, I wonder Ed, I'm, I, I don't pretend to know what you do. I love what you're doing. Uh, and you're going to get all these, well, what if we threw this? What if we threw that? Yeah. Uh, just wondering, like, the A, if you were to spell it out, Green Bay, you know, there'd be, like, an RT under it. I, I, duh. I, <laughs> but you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just fishing here. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, but I like the, op the, the, uh, the opportunities that this gives us. Uh, yeah, I think we're... We're fluid with this. Yeah. We're still new. So if we decide to adopt this, and then all of a sudden an icon hits you that you think that we could adopt pretty easily or change the A or whatever, um, you know, I think we'd be because I think this is a this is this is progress. I don't know if this is exactly what we want to have forever. So um, just waiting for that apple to hit our head. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I got it too. Yeah. Yeah. we're fishing for an identity. We don't have it yet because yeah. we. Finding it out. But I like this. Yeah. It's clean. Yeah. It's clean. Mm -hmm. And we can make it ours. That's what I appreciate, too. The yeah. cleanliness. I appreciate simplicity. Um, it's. I really want an icon, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I, I think the bridge is maybe the most appropriate icon. Um, but I, the GBPAC, without that Green Bay Public Arts Commission spelled out on the right, Having that alone, that I'm really against, just because 99% of people, that's going to mean nothing to them. And so I just, and so that's also that problem with yeah. the icon. Yeah, yeah. Until yeah. Until you're until right. Pair those you're right. No right. one's going to put those two together. So that's that's why I do have that. You know, we have, you know, it's spelled out there. Mm -hmm. You're going to need that for the first year or so, kind of in every instance, to introduce yourself. But once you get close friends, you know, you'll be able to take that out of the way. But until you have that example show up time and time again, people you know, are going to take time to put the two together. Okay. So um, we, we need to make a decision on this today. So <coughs> I like change. Mm -hmm. I like going forward. This is an opportunity. So I'm going to make a motion to go with this logo. Second. Any other discussion? Okay. <coughs> There's been a second. All in favor of adopting this new GBPAC, Green Bay Public Arts Commission logo proposed by Matt, say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, we're voting. Very good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Look forward to yeah. working yeah. with you in the future. Too. Yeah, yep. yeah, yep. thanks. Yep. Keep, uh, stay, keep on the line, and we'll have more questions for you. No, <laughs> All right, perfect. <laughs> yeah. thank, thank you, guys. Thank oh, you thank much. you. I'm sorry, we need to no, close, close, the close, the the close the floor. Oh, yeah, we didn't close the floor. I motion to close the floor. <coughs> Second. <laughs> All in favor, close the floor. Aye. 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 Close. Hey. Now motion. Okay, so. Uh, motion to, to, to adapt. To adapt. Matt's proposal for the second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So I'm not seeing a vote. Oh, on mine. Yeah. I, I, did you join me? Yeah. I joined the meeting too. Okay, I, okay, I that. Thank you, Matt. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to use the board to vote? Well, if nobody, if we're not getting. Yeah, I'm not seeing a voting. Uh, I'll, I'll not just mark. Yeah, oh, and we got it. I went through the door. Yes, we just did it. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was unanimous. <laughs> it was unanimous so. Okay, well, we're going to move on then. Um, item number two, referring back to September 26, 2018, discussion with possible action on the annual grant program application from the CP, set CP Center. So, okay. um, can I get an option or a, a notion to open the floor? 
A motion open the floor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. The floor is open. Anybody want to talk about this project? I am really just here to be a sounding board for any questions. Okay. Um, Laura mentioned that you guys were, I'm sorry, Kelly Sherman. Um, and your address? Yep, 223 Broadview Drive, Green Bay. Thank you. Um, I, you know, she mentioned that you guys were going to bring it back up for discussion, and she said that you kind of had explored some different options. I had emailed Laura. Um, you know, initially we had talked about the potential for moving that sculpture mm -hmm. off-site into a Green Bay location. Had emailed Laura with some of kind of our team's thoughts on that, and that yes, we would love to explore that, but that might, you know, warrant some additional funds, if possible, from you guys. Um, just because we've spent so much time and, and money and resources as a nonprofit already um, to have it housed at CP. So, you know, had, had kind of had some conversations back and forth with you, Laura, um, and it sounds like that maybe that doesn't work just from a budget standpoint, which is totally fine. So, wanted to just, I guess, reopen the floor to what you guys think about housing it at CP, even though it's technically outside of the Green Bay City limits. Um, Whatever you guys decide is, is certainly fine. Of course, we would love to have you involved. Mm -hmm. um, we, at WTC, we're actually planning on having them return to CP. We don't have a, a date set yet, but having them return to CP to have more of our clients involved and in kind of dropping that adaptive hammer. Mm -hmm. So that would be something certainly that I would love to invite you guys to kind of no matter the decision, so. Okay. Any other updates, Laura? Um, well, I pulled up our ordinance and it doesn't outright state that we can't go outside of city right. limits. Um, it reads, the Green Bay Public Arts Commission exists to fund artistic activities and support cultural programs that integrate and advance arts and culture as an essential part of life in Green Bay. Um, so I guess. In Green, in Green Bay. Bay. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I would love to, but I don't think we can. And our budget can't support moving it out. Moving it out. And I wouldn't want you to move it without having any right. support. Any yeah. benefit or like additional yeah. benefit to it. it. It seems like that really is the best place for it, I think, probably right at this time to occur. And it's just a shame. I'd love to be able to support it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious, have you, have yeah. you approached um, the village of Alloway to see if maybe they have um, they, book art? Um, <laughs> Yes and no, not for this particular project, but we have worked with them in the past, and they don't, unfortunately don't have a program that's really as robust as you guys when it has a really good public arts they have. I think something issues. that might come from this, even just this conversation, mm -hmm. is approaching <coughs> Alloway and finding out if yeah. they would even be willing to, you know, give some money to the GBPAC, then we could potentially open our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. sure. um, yeah, this is this is like a jurisdiction issue, I think, at this point. Um, or you know, I don't know. I don't know. If there's an opportunity to to be doing any kind of um, taking that identity and cloning it, you know, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, you have it at you have it there, but what if there was a way to clone it yeah. somehow? You know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're absolutely not opposed, and actually, we, our executive team loves the idea of, you know, taking CP's identity off of necessarily CP's physical footprint, particularly because we do serve so many clients that come from gr the Green Bay city area. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's probably a bigger kind of further discussion, and then the question really is, you know, what does funding look like for that, because at the end of the day, we're a nonprofit, and mm -hmm. all of our majority of our dollars need to go to support our clients and our programs, where this was kind of a one-off celebration of our community support thing. So I think that that's certainly a, a great idea, and I want to keep it on the table, but I think it's probably a much bigger discussion as far as what that looks like. So. Okay, that, that, that's good. And I think this has at least started up a good conversation yeah. of what's possible with sure. Alloway, uh, but this would definitely set a precedent that um, it doesn't have to be in Green Bay, and then other people would come. Yeah. So, but I think it's a great honor that you came to yeah, us, absolutely. and that you had us in, uh, yeah, in mind. Much. I mean, I'm really somehow we get. Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's now great, wonderful the community how big it is. And there's a further reflection that yeah. additional you know, viewers can have. Yeah. Sure. It's too bad you're on the other side. Well, of the water. I know it <laughs> really yeah. is. It's yeah. so close. Yeah. yeah. Um, if I can, I will certainly take that. I would be happy to approach the village of Alloway. 
if, if you guys are interested in some sort of collaboration, just so I can be an asset to you guys, what does that look like monetarily? Or do you, is that up for kind of discussion? I have no idea. I okay. think um, we, would, we would potentially, well, first we would have to find out uh, like what we're, since we're a Green Bay entity, sure. like what are those, I'm sure there's probably uh, structured ways to have formal relationships with yeah. surrounding communities. Yep. So we'd have to find out what those okay. things are. Okay. Um, but it makes sense that we would want to grow. I mean, our, our idea is public art. Like we want to have right. this area have public art, and we want to help other communities do that too. So um, if it's financial, if it's you know uh, letters of recommendation, okay. you know whatever. Um, okay. I think that's a that's a great area for the GBPAC to start considering growth sure. in. Well, here's what I can do then. Um, I will go ahead and because we have we do have a couple contacts at the Village of Alloway. I can go connect with them. I can present our project just to see if they want to be involved on kind of CP side of thing. But then I will also recommend that if they're interested, they approach you guys yeah. Yeah. and talk about a potential collaboration because I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, be great. They yeah, contact Laura. Yeah, uh, yeah, you could let me know okay, when that meeting takes place, yeah. and then I can come and just perfect vouch for. They, they, yeah. they do contract with Green Bay for fire service, so maybe they get contract with us for public art mm -hmm. service. So. Cool. Um, okay, thank you very yes, much. Yes, absolutely. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you very you. much. I know it was kind of a long process, but the hopefully the was really nice. Hopefully it's it's so so it's so clean. Okay. Yeah. Good. You said that you raised the bar there. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Nice, thanks. Thank well, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Motion to close the floor. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so then um, I think the motion then <coughs> would be to pass on the uh, annual grant application. We have to deny. I'll make the motion to deny the application. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Thank you. Item number three discussion on filling the liaison position and uh, commissioner position. So uh, just wanted to have a formal discussion here that uh, Tiffany unfortunately will be leaving our team in 2019 so she'll be with us for another few months and we're thankful for that Congratulations. thank you for having me and thank you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she's gonna have her hands full um, so at this point I'd like to entertain any ideas there's a few people that I'd like to talk about um, and if, if you guys have Ideas of other people. Let's let's talk about that now. <coughs> I don't have an idea for uh, a particular person, but maybe for a sort of person, mm -hmm. someone who uh, would be a uh, not so much involved in the artistic end, but in in funding end. The the, the you know a, a good donor person. Yes. Fundraising <coughs> experiences something we desperately need. Yeah. I know in some other boards they do have almost specific job, job titles that we want to fill in. I don't know if that's something we want to consider. You know, you need a lawyer, we need this, we, you know, all these mm -hmm. other, we kinda, other entities. We have like different disciplines of the arts, sort mm -hmm. of, but um, <laughs> we have a fundraising um, looming issue on our hands and we need to find out ways that we're going to solve that. So f finding somebody with uh, connections is definitely a priority, I think. And, uh, so um, the two people that I have reached out to to see if they need to be interested, um, one of them is Kelly Strickland. She's the executive director at the Widener Center. Um, I think she'd be really good as a uh, commission seat or as a liaison. She has a long time leadership in public advocacy. Um, she's the current director of the Widener Center, which it houses and holds and is associated with visual, performing, music, literary artists uh, across the board, national recognition type of things. Um, she's a member of the international cohort of the CEO program of National Art Strategies, which I don't really even know what that does. It sounds awesome. Um, it sounds strategic. Yeah. Uh, she's completed the executive fellowship for the arts management at the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, D.C. She's, she's got a long list of, of upstanding things that she's accomplished already. 
uh, she's expressed interest, and I think we should we should consider her um, for for either the liaison or the um, actual commission seat. So Kelly Strickland is one. Also, Paul Grawl uh, has reached out and expressed interest that he is interested in uh, potentially the liaison position. He is the new uh, chair for the Civic Symphony. Uh, he's a musician, has been for a long time, um, and he's also involved in like four or five other committees with ex extensive networks and stuff like that, um, including the, the Farmery, um, I, I'm not even, I, I don't know what else he's in, but I know he's playing a lot of roles. Uh, so Paul Grawl is another uh, really good candidate, I would say. Um, does anybody have experience with either of these people? I All right, uh, Kelly, um, our teaching artist group at, from the Boys and Girls Club uh, had an opportunity to meet with them uh, because they're trying, they are really doing, as far as strategizing, uh, to incorporate uh, all demographics and uh, potential clients, if you will, for the Widener Center. Mm -hmm. So uh, they've offered us like chunks of uh, us, the Boys and Girls Club, chunks of uh, tickets for performances that youth would normally not be able to have access to. Sure. So, uh, so she's really digging into communities, which I, I, I really like, uh, I, I like that mm -hmm. her strategy. Um, and uh, she's articulate, she, she's a powerhouse, uh, and, and, and it seems like she does have a plan. Mm -hmm. So it would be nice to be involved with something like that, mm -hmm. part of that plan. Uh, yeah. But I don't know the other gentleman, but I do know her. Paul, oh, yeah, so. Paul's name has Yeah. Oh, Celestine? No, go ahead, Stacy. No, he's just fantastic. He's how, how have you worked with him? I know he is on your civic, civic's a member of Mosaic. Okay. And um, from his, and I'm probably speaking on Celestine's post too, because I know you're involved with civic. Mm -hmm. um, from what I know is civic went into more of a clear, or more of a, um, streamlined direction once Paul okay. stepped into Civic. Is that right? With his leadership. So. Okay, cool. All right. So Paul's good. Mm -hmm. Celestine, so anything to add about that? Nope. That's, she said it all. Okay, mm -hmm. great. So it sounds like uh, <coughs> between both of you, I'm convinced. <laughs> you know, you and Celestine. So. Yeah. He sounds right. like a person of note. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Musician. Yeah. That's, that's good. <laughs> okay, so uh, if there's no other recommendations at this point. Can, uh, can I ask, are they, uh, do we still need to invite them? Or are they interested? Or so, so I think if there's uh, somebody that we're interested, that's a good point. So what I did with these folks is I just said, um, would you be interested in, in thinking about being a liaison position for the GBPAC? Um, and then you have to also mention that there is a vetting process, and ultimately, their position is 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 okay warranted by the mayor. So that's not right. Entirely okay, right our decision, but um, yep. yes. Yeah. So there, essentially, it leaves the GBPAC as a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Then the common council confirms um, with with the mayor. So so that's how if you if you know somebody you think they would be good, uh, reach out to them in that fashion, and then um, we will talk about them. November, December, and then uh, probably at this December meeting we'll need to confirm uh, position. So I also reached out to Tiffany if she has anybody that you'd like to recommend uh, from the tribe. You'd love to hear. Sounds like you're two really good candidates. There. So far, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay. Um, so uh, uh, are we going to uh, invite these folks or at least have them? Uh, sure. Aware that we've been talking about. Yes. Them. So right. I'll I'll communicate with with Kelly and Paul and let them know that we we brought them up, and uh, for the for the December meeting, um, might not be a bad idea if they just came and introduced themselves and said hello. So I'll invite them to the December meeting. Uh, well, I would hope before then, yeah, because 
If they're going to be confirmed by the... They need to be confirmed by January. You're going to have to decide that December meeting, which means they need to be in here by the next meeting in November. Yeah. So if okay. you, I mean, what you guys need to be doing right now is just reaching out via email, phone calls, asking if they're interested. Um, and then they can send basically their resume and like mm -hmm. a letter of interest to me. Uh, and then I'll send that on. Or if they want to send it right to um, Celestine... It needs to go through the mayor first, mm -hmm. but okay. we need kind of their application materials first. So then for the November meeting, we would have the candidates come and introduce themselves at the November meeting. And we would need to decide at the November meeting so that council can take it up in December. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it's necessary that they come in. It would be nice to expedite this. Okay. So then, um, well, what do we think? Do we want to have them come in or yeah. should we just... I mean, we can I can talk about it. Provide look at the resumes. Update at least during the November meeting. Okay, so if they wanted to attend just to speak, okay. they could. Or if they want to check out the meetings at November. I think it's it's polite to send an invitation that they're yeah. welcome to come if we're gonna right. be talking about mm -hmm. them. So uh, we'll we'll do that for November and then we'll also make the decision in November so that we can streamline it through December and have somebody ready for January. That sound like it works? Okay, so item number four, discussion with possible action on the annual grant program application from Alex Zacharias. So, who is he? from the outset, you have to recruit okay. yourself from the voting process. I am process. going to, uh, so what do I do? You can sit here, but you just have to recuse yourself from the voting process. I recuse process. him. Okay. And you have to do a dance that okay. symbolizes Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you got, Alex? Uh, do you open the floor to this, or how does it? No, you're. No, I'm part of the whole deal, right? Yeah. Now. So. It's okay. Do you have anyone right. else? Speaking no, you need to open the floor. Yeah, you need to open the mm -hmm. floor. My name is Alex Zachary. I'm sorry. Jacob, I'll make a motion to open the floor. Well, okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The floor is open. My name is Alex Zachary. It's 2313 Sunrise Court. Um, the I was approached by the Native uh, uh, Native Vote, uh, which is an organization uh, uh, mostly from the Oneida tribe, who uh, came to me as an artist and said, "Hey, uh, we're with the November sixth elections coming up. Uh, we'd like to get the message on the importance of <coughs> talking about uh, nonpartisan issues, uh, things uh, like." Um, health and the environment and uh, that pertains to uh, their interests. And what they're trying to do is motivate uh, the uh, uh, Native Americans across throughout Wisconsin. Uh, but there's, there's a large uh, populations of uh, Native Americans that live within Green Bay itself. So they said, hey, can you make a video? And I said, well, yeah, video. Is a, is a great idea. Uh, it's just how do we reach the audience uh, with that video if there's a potential visual. Mm -hmm. So I suggested that um, being an art activist, I said, why don't we uh, you know, make this larger than, uh, than usual? And I, I, I basically said, uh, given our nature of communication, Native Americans, we've always used symbols um, since the ancient times. If you go to the caves, you know, there was uh, uh, images uh, that, uh, that image, images prompted conversation. So, uh, for instance, I have here, this is a universal image here. It's, it's a spiral that, rec uh, that, that can symbolize life, water, all those kind of things. So the idea is to superimpose these kind of images onto, uh, uh, onto a wall. In this case, uh, we met with the Neville Museum and they love the idea uh, um, because it's art and messaging. It's, it's got the humanities and art involved. Um, while that's superimposed on the Neville uh, Public Museum, uh, there will be uh, folks uh, representing the organization there to answer questions about you know how to get uh, registration for for voting why it's important in voting for voting but again in a nonpartisan way it's more about what are your issues let's talk about it uh, just to start a conversation just to get more people motivated to go out and vote by November 6th 
So uh, the idea is to have six events. Um, one is actually starting this, uh, this week, Thursday. Um, so uh, we've been scrambling, I as an artist have been scrambling first to uh, get those images put together, uh, meeting with the Neville Public Museum, they've given us the okay, getting the appropriate equipment, uh, sort of editing on the fly, um, and then part of uh, that presentation, there, there may be some native ceremony, you know, uh, that, that's uh, not unusual. It all usually opens up for, to recognize uh, uh, that, uh, to recognize the natives that, that were part of this land, so acknowledging that, that, that conversation. Um, so uh, within, this, within the state of Wisconsin, there's uh, over half a dozen tribes, Potawatomi, Oneida, Menominee, uh, Stack. I mean, there's, so they are mobilizing, which is kind of interesting. There's a, mo there's a national mobilization via social media. So uh, what just recently came up was that we would be doing sort of a live Facebook reporting of what's going on in Green Bay, what's going on in different parts of Native nations, uh, just to, to have this conversation, hey, we need to go out and vote. Uh, uh, the, so so, so uh, we have two dates, and four are flexible only because the weather's been kind of bad, mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as the rain breaks, we're gonna go out there and, and do the other four. Um, but we locked in on two dates, uh, uh, and uh, um, we're within the or within this uh, organization is uh, an artist. Uh, she's a poet. She was a Wisconsin poet, a D. Sweet, um, and she is basically the principal, one of the principal uh, uh, action folks uh, involved with Native Vote. So they're actively already doing uh, uh, that work within their, their, uh, their tribes. And they're just bringing it out into the public here in Green Bay because there is a large population in Green Bay as well. So um, uh, we have also a young artist who is Native American and a, a, a young lady who is also uh, uh, politically interested. They're young, I mean, they're 18, 19 years old. So to get that kind of interest from, from the, our younger population is really cool. Uh, they're just trying to find a vehicle, how to art articulate. Right. So one is, a, uh, uh, the gentleman is a hip hop artist, uh, and uh, she's more political. She goes, you know, I really want to tell our youth uh, the importance about polls and voting and so it's all this synergy, all this energy uh, um, coming together by uh, coming together at these events, symbols, some, some, uh, some possible, some music related to that, and then uh, just um, reaching out to folks and say the importance of voting yeah. with, with a strong social media push behind it. Okay. So there's going to be six of these events. Correct. Are they going to be the same in no. procedure? No. What, what's going to What's going to be happening is uh, it's it's a work in progress. Uh, uh, what we're hoping to do is to be able to have folks uh, donate art ideas mm -hmm. from their respective nations uh, as we're going along. Uh, there's also uh, they have a campaign where they're taking where they have. Uh, people holding up posters saying uh, seventh generation voting. So we would superimpose those images up there. Um, so it's art in progress. Each time there's gonna be something new and something different. But with the idea that we need to talk about issues uh, that affects our communities. Okay. Native communities specifically? Uh, no, I, I mean, if we talk about water, it affects all of us. Right. So <laughs> it's, 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 it's this big conversation right. rather than just focused. Okay. And the public art components would be the, the video that you, you'd be making, hip hop, so that's music and, and literary arts. Correct. Um, uh, 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 and just editing constantly, just trying to update the content, uh, 
helping them up with the helping them out with social media uh, visuals that they can utilize, uh, the rental of equipment, uh, setting up audio equipment right. and such. So so that's where I'm heavily being involved in. Sure. So they said, you know, you as a projection artist, uh, can you graffiti the wall for us mm -hmm. while we give out the message? Right. Okay. And the events will all take place at the Neville. Presently, it's going to be all at the Neville because uh, I told them if we were going to uh, um, if we were to approach the Green Bay Public Arts, it has to be in, in the, within the Green Bay city lines. Mm -hmm. So uh, they said they have no problems with that. Um, of course, uh, we can take this uh, this on the road, sure. but for the purposes of uh, this project, it's right now right here within Green Bay City Lights. Okay, and so we'd be projecting on, do you know which wall? Okay. Yes, the wall facing the river. The river, oh, and the river, okay. Right, so that hopefully it can be seen from the other side of the river. Mm -hmm. You're driving by, hopefully, you know, it, you know it, 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 it'll bring awareness, it'll bring a conversation. Mm -hmm. We're invite, they're, they're inviting people to come and Snapchat, hey, take a picture, talk mm -hmm. about this. So they really want a strong social media component behind. Okay, is there going to be, like, what's going to draw people to it? Uh, WBAY, because uh, uh, I used to work at WBAY, <coughs> Jeff Alexander said, oh, this is brilliant, this is a great idea, we're going to do a story. Mm. Um, so on Thursday night, it'll be airing at uh, 10 o'clock. Okay. Um, I'll probably be interviewed, and I'm going to put a plug for us and say, well, you know, this is... Brought to you by, mm -hmm. sure. Great. But it, there's a lot of collaboration, a lot of components. I know that uh, the Neville Museum is going to be celebrating uh, their 200 year anniversary, and one of them is they're going. They they brought it. They're bringing in an artist from Wisconsin who's going to superimpose laser lighting right on their on their walls too. So mm -hmm. um, we're not going to be the first. We're going to be soon after this gentleman superimposing it. But uh, I love you know. Um, the, so the Neville loves the idea of being able to to expand their their messaging as well. Um, so uh, <coughs> they're even considering in the, in the future maybe we should just create a, a dedicated space for this kind of mm -hmm. activism, if you will. Yeah, that's another you idea know. out there. Um, and you know the the thing about uh, project, you know, because th this is an idea that I want to do further down the line. Is it's just a run and gun splashing art on building, you know, so it'll be spontaneous uh, depending on uh, uh, what the messaging is and any given time, it's, it's just a good opportunity uh, uh, to shine the light, if you will. Yeah. So there is, there's going to be the projection, there's going to be an introduction by some live people, but is there going to be other live art happening there, like a performance art or anything like well, that? Well, you know, uh, as far as uh, uh, there will be performing art, but but for the most part it's going to be, it's not uh, performance, it's, okay. it's uh, there'll be some native drumming, okay. you know, yep. uh, there'll be a sort of a traditional opening up of uh, ceremonies so like that? sage, you know, burning. Uh, so it's going to be uh, respectfully done, you know, within uh, uh, but uh, just like if you've seen in, in the, uh, uh, if you've gone to Art Street, that they've had dedicated stages where they present dance and so on. So it'll 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 be uh, there'll be some elements of that as well. How many people do you think are going to come to these? Uh, we're they're expecting at least fifty to a hundred people uh, initially, and hopefully that will expand. Okay. Cool. Is there food there? Uh, no, we haven't taken that, but that's a good idea, you know, if there was a food truck nearby or something in their parking lot, that would be a great idea. Maybe some Indian tacos, I'm getting hungry. Yeah. But, <laughs> awesome. but that would be, that's a great, that's a great idea. It definitely draw more people there. That's a very good idea. Um, but again, they're really focused on uh, art activism, you know, the importance of uh, uh, how civic media can help bridge right. uh, uh, art and the importance of having these kind of community conversations. So does everyone understand the concept? And what's going to be expected? Any questions? I've seen
some questions. Mm -hmm. um, do you see it? Um, so you said six events are, do you anticipate this all happening before election day? Yes. Okay, so that's, you know, just. Yeah, it's a build up. Each, each time there's, it is a build up. Uh, it's, it's, because it's November 6th, we pick the number six. So oh, six, six okay. events. Okay. You know. Great. So you estimate roughly about 50 people per event? 50, and uh, that's uh, physically, and hopefully, uh, we don't know hopefully what our reach would be right. via this social. Right, this will be online as uh, well. It will be online as well. So. And, and, and uh, uh, there, there is a, um, uh, if there's a national uh, movement within, within uh, uh, Indian country mm -hmm. to that they heard about what we're doing and say, hey, why don't you you know, hook up with us and make this, and, and we'll transmit this nationally as well. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're hoping to do. Um, it's a get out the vote kind of effort. Um, I'm just curious, maybe this is a question for Celestine or Laura, is there any concern about the GBPAC funding anything of this kind of political yes. nature? So as long as it's not a nonpartisan message, I mean, voting is a nonpartisan message. Yeah. Well, you would think it was. It's not. Really? No. It, look at look at what all one party has done to throw obstacles in the way of voting. Sure, absolutely. So they do not view this as nonpartisan, unfortunately. Because I love the idea of art activism. And I'd love us to be involved in that, but I really am worried we are going to piss off a whole segment of possible donors. <laughs> well, we can we can look at it that way, or it can, or we can look at it as uh, rather than pissing them off, it's going to open up a dialogue. Yeah, I wish, I wish, I, I really, know. I'm seriously, no, I've, no, been no, involved, no. I've been involved in this in a long time. <coughs> I've done reg voter registration and everything, and. Um, it is really unfortunate. You would think it'd be a nonpartisan issue because when I registered people, I registered people who told me they're going to vote Republican. I didn't care. I believe in democracy. I believe in the process. You know, yep. even though I belong to the other party, you know, yep. right? I believe in that that dialogue and and all that. It it's not it's not. <laughs> there are those who do not believe in that dialogue. They believe in their own power. They believe they believe in, in, in making their power permanent. They believe in. Uh, so you think this would this would muddy the waters, and this would potentially put shine the GBPAC in uh, as a by, as a part in a partisan light. In a partisan. Light. Unfortunately, I really mm -hmm. do. I, I I hate it. No 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 no. It's it's it's, it's you. We have to be conscious of that. I yeah. Totally yeah. Uh, and and because I, I love the idea of art activism, I think that is way cool. But I don't. I'm really hesitant about us getting involved in it. I, I think we will piss some people off, and I don't know how many, because we are a very polarized society these days, and it doesn't take much. And I don't know how well it would snow, how much it would snowball. I remember. Um, I remember we sitting on the, with the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we try to present the idea of, of putting sculptures out. Mm -hmm. They knocked it down right away. They said, no, well, why are we wasting money yep. on, on art? Why yep. are we doing that? Bec if, you know, uh, some of the art pieces may have uh, connotations. Today we have sculptures all over the place. Mm -hmm. So we can be in a safe space or we can be in a brave space. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. know. You know what I mean? Uh, but. Art is always going to provoke. Right, that's true. That is our mission. That is, I mean, we can entertain, but I think art should speak to important matters. Yeah. Uh, and uh, no doubt we're probably going to attract negativity. Uh, and I think we're probably going to do the opposite as well. So. Uh, I, I, I don't know if we're too early on to take on something as major as this that might affect us negatively or or is the message at the event going to be just vote? Yeah. Is That's it all it be is. vote for no, no. particular no. issues, no. stances, no. politicians? It's just it's just go out and vote. Um, 
uh, again, um, that youth are, are stepping up and getting interested. Oh, what's this voting thing about? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just having those conversations yeah. of why you need to be out there. Yeah. So we, we need um, to decide if this is something. Because even within the tribes, yeah. You know, they're separated even within the tribes. I mean, you know, they've so got the Democrat, you know. Right, but, you know. It, 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 there's data out there that there is differences, but generally, Native tribes vote Democrat. And Republicans are well aware of that. Well, this, I think, you know, are we, are, would we be pissing off people that are potential supporters of the GDPAC, or are we pissing off, would we potentially be pissing off people that don't care about us anyway? Uh, I, I would think we run the risk of potential donors, because uh, I would think there are many deep pockets that tend to vote Republican, uh, so th I think that's a risk. I don't know how Those are rebel, that's rebel, you know. Yeah, I, 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 it's a really, really, really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Because I really think this is a nonpartisan issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, I registered Republicans. That, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but but there are those who definitely don't see it that way. Yeah. Right. Right. No, I get it. Tiffany, do you have an idea? I really like the idea. I looked at the different attachments that you provided, and it seems like it would reach out to actually more than just the Native American populations, mm -hmm. but anyone that could obviously see it. These artistic billboards. And um, I, I think you guys made a good point, though, that this could, if you have donors that are, I guess you'd really need to know who your donor audience and your, your populations are. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, so we'd be running the risk of making ourselves vulnerable at the sake of, you know, participating in this thing that is pretty cool, mm -hmm. uh, frankly, and, and to, to a pretty good extent having a lot of public art involved. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I'm really having a hard time with this one. I don't know. Um, Laurie, you recommended approval subject to minor technical revisions. I'm curious, did you have specific technical revisions to recommend? No, I just put that in so that way okay. so you guys generally have revisions and stuff. Um, I know I can't vote on this matter, but... Um, Your recommendation is to approve. The recommendation is to approve because, well, I'm hesitant now because Randy's brought up a very, very right. good point. Um, I think just looking at our mission of creating public art and public art helps shine a light on diversity and it helps showcase our community. Um, and I don't think, not that we haven't been sponsoring great projects already, but like we haven't really focused on this aspect of our community. Um, and maybe, maybe that's something that we take away from this today. Maybe we don't help out with this specific voting centric project, but maybe we have something down the road like that focuses on native culture and has it incorporated into maybe mm -hmm. the, um, yeah. uh, we're for. Well, I, I love making that connection yeah. with Native. I love doing that. And, and, and I love the idea of, you know, activist art. I, I, I really do. Yeah. Uh, I, and I, I think art should be activist. But I'm really hesitant, especially now. Uh, and, and I was hesitant as well. Throwing our hat in that. That's why when I went, we went to the Devil Museum, who was like, right. represents the whole community. Right. Uh, I felt that if they had a buy-in, then uh, they would be speaking to the broader community as well. So they felt like this was an important, uh, uh, or an opportunity for them as well. So they they weren't worried about any negativity because of, uh, of the potential of being the opposite. It's like, okay, uh, this is sort of what we do anyways. You know, uh, they represent all communities within within the four walls, if you will, um, and this is just another method and another way of of, uh, of doing their mission. So uh, I feel that they can afford true. that 
I mean, they're celebrating 200 years. We just turned two this month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and yeah. they're not really putting any money into it, are they? No. Yeah. They're giving us a space. Space, which is, you know, and it's a public space. So, I mean, they're. It's a great space. Yeah. 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 It, it's. <laughs> Their their skin in the game is minimal, and they do have a, you know they have, do have a long history, and so they can you know they've got a lot to bounce on. So yeah. the, uh, the issue comes down to this is this is in, this is going to be a voting issue. We're talking about representing because the Public Arts Commission also represents culture. Yep. You know it is, it's it's art and culture. So. If, if if we're talking about leveraging a group of people that really represent the culture of Green Bay um, in the context of voting, I mean it's it's definitely a, a weird place. But I think we're advocates for culture and art, so um, I think we'd be advocates of supporting any cultures that are in Green Bay in whatever, e even in terms of so maybe even specifically in how people vote. Like, we want to make changes in Green Bay. We want to see public art and culture represented more in the public right of way. So I'm, I'm going to be in favor of this, and, and that's why. Um, but I'm wondering if there's room to, to you're asking for $1,000? If do you need that much, like, or is it is this for fifteen? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Yeah. I'm, uh, just for just some rental equipment alone for six days. You know, it's almost actually. I I, I lowballed it. And it's a little higher. Um, uh, that's a lot of money. I think. Yeah, that's two hundred. So it's like two hundred just for the equipment. Two hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. So times six. Mm -hmm. It's twelve hundred. It's twelve hundred. Is it? Have you tried to get that donated? Um, yeah, um, uh, but with such such short notice, it's yeah. like you know, it's like this is happening right now. It's well, you know, you can rent it, and I'm like, okay, thank you. Yeah, you know. Um, that that number is going to be, I think, too high for me to support at. But you know, if we can support maybe two of the events, or or you know. Three, um, then I'd be more like a, like six hundred. I know it's not what you're looking for, um, but well, I think I think more important than the money is just acknowledgement, support. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I would be willing to vote that for sure. That's uh, more important is uh, that whenever like we just had folks approaching us, mm -hmm. you know. It's 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 a for us it's it's we're starting to be noticed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and for a closed culture, and I want to say closed, I don't mean to offend anybody, but but you know the nations they too tend to tend to be uh, insulated, insulated. So to come out and say, hey, we want to do something with the city of Green Bay, it's kind of an opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. It, has there been any thought of possibly inviting uh, the Republican Party, Brown County, the Republican Party, the Brown County Democratic Party? It's public, but for them to, to actually reach out to the parties to maybe set up a booth to, so they could disseminate both information. That's a, that's both a good, parties. That's a great that's opportunity. A good idea. Both parties. Yeah, of right. course. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. The, the whole idea is not to say. Only the Democrats are only I know, I know, I know, yeah. I know that. But, but you're saying to reach out to them formally. Yes, to so reach out to them formally I think that's a great so that idea. they can set up a booth. That's a brilliant and idea. Share some information. Share information. So you're working on registering and yeah, issues. Uh, so and so making Steve. Yes, so Steve. Um, so that when you start to disseminate political information, regardless of the fact that you have two parties and you have to remind yourself, there's more than two political yeah, parties right. in America. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the minute you start to do that, then you make it a political thing and not a voting thing. Right. Yeah. And, that's, yeah. well. and that's what we're trying to avoid. We're just trying right. to avoid. So, so Salsim, would you suggest that we don't actually seek booths in? We just decide Correct. to support or, or... Voting. Right. Okay. Correct. Yeah. That makes sense. For me, it's... it's okay. It should be nonpartisan. It's not. Well... Unfortunately. And I... I Is there any other discussion on this? 
I, I think actually my biggest hang, hang up similar to yours is the, the price tag for a temporary event which will have a permanent component as well with it being on social media but still. I'm thinking 600 is what I'd be in favor of. I support getting the vote out to everybody and anyone. I support the, the cultural aspect of this project, um, the public art aspect of this project. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support this but I think probably six makes more sense. And, and that way you'd be able to do it, you'd be able to have three events, um, and we'd be supporting it, but we wouldn't and be really digging into our right. really yeah. intense compromise. And I totally take your point with yeah, the potential yeah. of, for raising that flag, you know, I mean, but yeah, I, it needs to be said, and um, you know, we've I think we do have to, to be brave, and it's this is not a political statement at all. It's uh, everyone should know, be aware of, of an election, and mm -hmm. that's something I think we can and should support, no matter the optics. And you know, it, with this is, we're going to run into this if if we're going to be true to our nature. When an artist comes in, they usually have an agenda. Mm -hmm. And we're going to run into this, so this is a good test, if yeah. you will, you know. Uh, uh, artists are activists. Yeah. yeah. Just, that's, so just, that's just what they do. I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to support this at $600. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, I'm sorry, I need to, do I need to step out? No, you're or? fine. Mm -hmm. um, I'll motion to close the voting. Four. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay, so no, you just can't vote. So. Um, I'm going to make a motion to support this initiative uh, at the cost of the GBPAC funding it for six hundred dollars. You're making a motion? Yeah, I, I believe I can. Sure, you can. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll second. All in favor? Can, can I have two minutes to think things over in my head? You can have one. Because I want to support it. No, I get it. No, I totally respect where you're coming from. It's okay. I totally get it. And I knew that we knew, I, we all knew this conversation was going to happen, but that's why we're doing it, right. just to have that conversation, right. you know. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. But it's not. But so whatever you feel is, yeah. is necessary. Yeah, well, Always, of course. Always. Well, right. Always. But I'm conflicted because I want to vote both ways. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I just want to resolve that conflict in my head. You brought up a good point. I'm so concerned if, it, if it's going to put a negative light to it organization then I, I I wouldn't want that to happen you know what I mean yeah but at the same time I, if they were if if, if other or if communities can come to us because they know they can come to us so that's a, that's an opportunity yeah, yeah and I, I really you know, like that yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think there is always a civic component to art mm -hmm. you know but this seems like it's more the opposite is that art is the civic component. The art is the component to civics. This, the, the emphasis is civics here, not so much the art. And unfortunately, these polarized times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I'll, I'll vote on. Okay. <laughs> so that would be three yes and one no. We need to do it. Do we need to do it on here? No, that's fine. It's I not I'll, working. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, so the so vote, so the uh, item passes. Did it? Did we? Three to one. Three to one. Well, we didn't really vote, I mean, you just. We did. Did we? Did we say I and A? Mm -hmm. I, 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 and you, you took no. a minute. Okay. Yep, okay. You yep. voted no. Okay. Thank, thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, okay, next is Chairman's report. So, um, I have a few things to report on. We had a very fantastic last couple of months. <coughs> The GBPIC was uh, a part of multiple uh, public art initiatives that were successfully implemented recently. Uh, Rusty Wolf installed his awesome, great sculpture that is on Walnut Street and uh, went up successfully and it's beautiful and I've already <coughs> received positive comments about it. Um, Casey Early Krieger's project for the Unhinged event uh, was successful and is still outside the uh, Old Fort Square on Broadway and is in the process that the two wood panels on the inside are in the process of being further decorated by the Arts of Unhinged and will remain on public display until January. 
Um, Bo Thomas's pyramid project was successfully completed as a public art performance and it stands as a visual art performance. Um, and that is now across the street of the Neville Museum at Light Park. That needs to be moved. Okay. Um, I thought I was under the impression that's where it was going because it was already. You guys decided to put Casey's piece there. So it can stay there now, but when Casey's piece is done, that needs to move to Irwin and East Shore. Okay, well maybe we can have that to you. Unless you guys vote to change it. I think we'll probably <laughs> do that. Because the, we already put the wood in over there, so. Okay, so um, Bo's piece is up, and it's, it's great. Also, um, Unhinged was awesome, and that was, uh, that we had a couple public art performance pieces at the actual event, um, music, visual art, and performance art were all happening outside of the event the night of October, uh, was the event, 96th, yeah, gosh, it's been a while already. So, I, we had a great, we had a great month and I just wanted to commend everyone's efforts that we're doing fantastic stuff and uh, we're getting, we're boosting public art in Green Bay, so I just want to acknowledge those things. Um, and I think that's all from my reports. Just a lot of great stuff. Oh, uh, also funding. I think uh, we should we should consider uh, we should still be considering who can help us out with funding. Uh, Laura and I you know, have some chats that's still on our. It needs to be on our periphery because uh, things are coming up. So, I'm wondering as far as uh, I'm noticing uh, performances to fund orgs like have uh, five bands come out, hey, we support the Green Bay Pentagon, all the money. I don't know. You know, using, using events. I'm wondering if the Widener Center can dedicate an event day for us, you know, where um, we were to approach them. We haven't tried that yet, but I'm sure we could probably. How do we beg for money, you know? <laughs> But in an artistic way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I just I just realized there's a fundraising update on here. So. Yeah. So were you going to be doing Can that? I, yep. Can okay, I add so. one thing to your coordinator's report or yeah, report? Sure. Can you just speak on the progress of Embark? Sure. So Embark is uh, we have a new date for installation that's uh, December nineteenth, and we're in the fabrication phase right now, and it's it's going very well. The foundation is going to be starting this week. You'll be seeing, seeing uh, the location on North Washington and uh, North on Avenue start to get, be getting demolished. And probably by the end of this week, if not really next week, the actual new footing will be poured and we'll be taking one giant step towards the fruition. Yeah? Question. <coughs> Isn't that the site that there's possible new development on? That the I don't hear that right now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get, getting the uh, site specifically located in that place was, was not easy. So, like, if we're going to move it, then we're going to move it. But right now, this is where it's going. Yeah. Well, hopefully, if there's a new development, maybe it can be done with it there, and, and, mm -hmm. and they'll want it. That's they true. Want it. Yeah. But I don't know construction-wise if that's a problem and want to damage it. Part of the RFP for the development of that site included a 1% requirement of the budget to go towards public arts, so I'm pretty sure that that could potentially fund a relocation of that piece. Did that pass? Did the DAC go through council where we put the RFP? It was just that specific one. Oh, just that specific yeah. one. Okay. I'd like to do it on all. Yeah, just that one particular Okay, right. Yeah. Kind of the hasn't been established. Still working on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going it's going well. And I'm not going to let anybody see, see the pictures yet. Yeah, we have a meeting later today. Yeah. Be good? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, in my coordinator's report, so I had some attachments in there. Just so you guys can see that I actually am doing stuff with my time. <laughs> um, I think the first thing on there is the soup application. Um, I submitted an uh, application for soup for uh, vinyl wrapped transformer boxes. Um, it's pretty low hanging fruit as far as public art is concerned. Um, I should be finding out the results of that this Friday. 
Uh, and then if we are selected to present, I'm definitely inviting all of you guys to come attend that event and yeah. please vote for it. Yeah. So I'll keep and it bring your friends and your family right. and your mm -hmm. family's friends and your yep. friends' friends and your cousins and your third mm -hmm. cousins and Yeah. When do you think that's gonna happen? When the vinyl no, would happen or yeah. when we have to show up. Uh it'll be November sixth, I think. <coughs> Fifth or sixth. I think it's the day of soup. The the day of the election? Isn't it it I is. Know. I think it is. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Really? I didn't catch that. That's not good. <laughs> well, maybe it'll be good for us if we can rank it. Rally around the people. Everybody else will have their group vote. <laughs> vote early, I guess. Vote early that day. Yeah. yeah. Come, to, come to the event time. Vote early, vote often. Cool. Yeah. Um, you can vote now. That's right. So I got it on my hand. So you can vote now in the clerk's office Monday through Friday, business hours, 8.30 to 4.30. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and then the next part on there, um, I just, just kind of dipping our toes into researching um, sidewalk poetry. Uh, this would be a collaboration between departments uh, working with public works since we repair sidewalks every year. It's a thing that we have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so why not incorporate some art into that? So I reached out to a few communities to get their input on their system that they do. I'm still waiting on some actual numbers, but it sounds kind of like this. The concrete stamps would be between 200 to $500 uh, to make the stamp, but you can reuse the stamp so we could essentially get five stamps or something to start out with, and then from there we could place them multiple times throughout the city. Who makes the stamps? Uh, there's many companies, so <coughs> figuring out which one we would want to go through. Um, I didn't get the name from Appleton just yet, but Appleton does this program, and I've been looking at St. Paul. And cool. Um, so it's, it's, it's adding poetry into... Pressing it into what uh, uh, Yep. So it would cool. be... <coughs> It wouldn't just be painted on or anything, that would be actually part of the structure. Right. I wonder if they can do graphics too, like a design and like imagery. I think it's very simple, simple imagery, nothing mm -hmm. too too complex. Um, Couldn't the artist just go and when the cement is wet, just take a stylus and put their hands in there? No, yeah. just put our logo on there, you know. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to get our name out. Um, so those are the two kind of big things I've been working on right now. Um, also, this past month, we finished the mural on the side of House of Homebrew. So that is now done. It's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well really done. Thank you. Work. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad it's <laughs> um, And yeah, we're two years old this month. So that's mm -hmm. exciting. Um, and I guess I'm just going to roll right into the fundraising part because yep. that's also well, part well, Before you do fundraising though, uh, how are we doing on insurance? What's the scoop on insurance? insurance. So, Celestine and I, we talked with Nate. Um, we Nate? can... Nate Froming is the risk manager. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, can you help me explain this? Because sure. it explains to me every time and I get it, but then I get the basics of it and I'm like, we just need this, but it doesn't. Sure. So um, <laughs> what we would need to do is to, for the rotating pieces, um, the, the current, the, the permanent pieces are easy. We can incorporate those into our insurance, the city's insurance policy. The rotating pieces are more difficult because they don't belong to us. They belong to the artist. So um, our deductible is $10,000. Um, which would apply to anything. So let me give you an example. Um, the flood that happened on the east side due to excessive rain, uh, one of those flooded areas was Ernie Wolf um, Fire Station, Fire Station 5. And so there was water all the way up to the door jam in the basement. Um, our deductible for that incident is $150,000, if I'm not mistaken. So just like any insurance, you have to pay your deductible before your insurance kicks in. So likewise, with the rotating pieces as well as any permanent pieces that belong to the, to the city, um, slash PAC, um, we have a $10,000 deductible. 
Now, the way that we need to work this is that we really should not accept any rotating pieces that are worth $10,000. Um, we can also, in the contract, say that your piece is worth $2,500, $3,500. And if there were to be significant damage, we would need to be prepared to reimburse the artist, but we need to make sure that we're reimbursing the artist only up to a certain amount. So what that means is the GBPSC needs to set aside funds in order to be able to do that should there be significant damage that would damage the piece according to the value that we say the piece is valued. So like I said, we really can't accept rotating pieces that are very expensive because that means that we would end up paying ten thousand dollars and then the insurance would kick in. So we'd be in this we'd be creating our own insurance. No, we would be well, because we've got to cover our insurance. We've got to cover our yeah. Yeah. But we but essentially we'd be paying the the artist. Right. So okay. Through the, I mean we can make an insurance claim but we still have to pay the deductible. Right. So are we able to seek insurance outside of? No, we've been around and around this. We can't, like, because. No, but in terms of, now in terms of general liability, meaning that if someone were injured on the piece, the city can cover that. It's the damage to the piece. Mm -hmm. So no, we've been around and around this and we cannot. Okay. That's really, that's, that's too bad because. Unless the artist takes out insurance uh, for herself. Yeah. That's that's the reason. If, if that they signed, oh, I'm sorry. That's the reason that two of the four accepted artists backed out is because of because of because this. they don't have the insurance and that our insurance, but our insurance. So essentially, we would have to pay the damage of the piece, damage to the piece, not the general liability if someone were injured. Mm -hmm. Damage to the piece. So yeah, we, so we don't have we we don't have these insurance. Or we don't have these pads insured then. No, and the way that. We, we don't have the art on the pads insured. Yeah. The pads are insured. Yeah. So the art is the important part. The, the art is insured, but only, but we would have to reimburse the artist for, so right, let me just be clear to answer your question, um, Kent, more specifically. Yes, if the art were damaged, the GBPAC would have to pay the, the damage amount to the artist. Right. So we need to make sure that that value is a value that the PAC can manage. But that's not insurance though. I mean that's that'd be the GBPAC paying out right the Well but it is insurance but it's a high deductible insurance. Ten thousand dollars. It would go towards the deductible. Right. Yeah. And each each artwork would it's not like a, a blanket, it's each artwork would be a ten thousand dollar deductible if it was So right, is it cumulative or is it singular? It would be singular. Singular, right. Okay. It would be singular? Mm -hmm. Holy cat <laughs> Yeah. I thought it would be <laughs> so that's why it's really important, let me oh. just emphasize one more time, it's really important that for the rotating pieces, we don't accept pieces that are but that's like a, that's very a huge, expensive. Yeah, that's a big problem though. Can I throw out a wild example? Mm -hmm. Let's say we've got five rotating art pieces up and there's a wild hail storm mm -hmm. and all of them are damaged. Mm -hmm. So a meteor like, storm. A meteor storm, sure. Mm -hmm. So it would, would that be one incident or would that be five separate incidents? So. You know, that's really a, a question for our risk manager okay. since I'm not an insurance yeah. e expert. Um, but we think that we can, this is the way that we can manage this. Now, if insurance is too much, right, then what we do is we can, we can acquire those pieces, but we would still have a $10,000 deductible. Okay, so most of the pieces that I've seen that have been put as an application are mm -hmm. like, at least ten thousand dollars. So um, we'd have to turn them down, or we'd have to have that artist just. Well, would they sign a waiver that says that the that the value of the piece is for the that? purposes of the rotating program twenty five hundred. I mean, if they and you know here here's the problem with Laura and I a year ago had a conversation with one of our insurance providers, someone who. Um, um, provides uh, a different kind of insurance. We have Civmic and we also have other insurance companies that provide insurance in the city. And the problem with art is what is the value? The value isn't only just what the artist says the value is. The value is the actual purchase price. So if the art isn't purchased, then you know the artist has an, an argument, well, this value for the piece was this before it was damaged. 
and then the city has an argument, but no one bought the piece, so we don't know how much that's worth. Th this gets into a very a complicated gray area for the rotating pieces, for the for the um, annual permanent pieces. Yeah. Permanent pieces. That's a little different, and also those permanent pieces are a little bit more valuable too. So, okay. I don't understand how the insurance can't be a blanket for the city. With a ten thousand dollar deductible. For per the whole city, though. per piece. Yeah. Well, no, not per piece. Well, I mean, I, I, that's what I, that's what's confusing. So me. I, you know, I will make sure that I circle back with Nate and. I Maybe I can just ask Nate to come in. Yeah, he could for the next meeting. Yes, I think he could. I mean, because like if, with the example with the fire station, I mean. It's not each individual fire station. I mean, that would pay well, the that deductible. One was. That would be the, the city is covered, and we pay that the deductible. Well, we also had damage over the transit center, right? If you recall, yeah. So, so but that was all covered with the, one. Um, I don't know that that was one incident covered uh, by quote, one deductible. I'm sorry, do you remember the quote that I sent over uh, from? So, well, I guess that would be moot. My insurance uh, company couldn't offer insurance to the city. It's just not possible. So you can through your own, per but this is what the artists were not willing to do. They were not willing to go to their own individual insurance providers and find and get insurance for their art pieces placed in the city. That's on the not city very property. typical. I mean, it is not. Yeah. But you know, I have to say there. Maybe in places like California, New York, and Illinois, where there's just more art activity, maybe, maybe there's different insurance products. But yeah. For what, what we found in Wisconsin, we've been around and around, and this is this is what we found. Okay. So how do we move forward? So do, do we? Uh, I'm wondering, what if the artists were be, they become uh, they were become more business, but what if they were become an LLC? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they still need to get insurance. Like so. Right. I, so I have insurance that covers up to twenty-two thousand dollars for a piece. Um, I think up to three pieces that I can have at any given moment, but um, that's because I purchased actual business insurance, mm -hmm. and that's what artists are like, not. Do. They either they don't have the capacity, yeah, it's just right. not to cheap. do that, yeah, um, right. or right. And so, and this is this is the other issue. Now, speaking from the city's perspective, it's not the city's job to provide business insurance for an entity that we are contracting with. No. So, no. But, but at the same time, we want to build the art community. And mm -hmm. so this, this leaves us in an odd position, yeah. quite frankly. Because we're trying to attract artists to put up big sculptures. I mean, this, these aren't small sculptures that we're asking for. This is a six by six foot pad. Um, think minimum they're going to be around seven thousand dollars you know it's going to start there like from my own experience like I can't put anything else out there that unless it's something that I went together which is kind of what I did and I'm not claiming insurance on that piece but it's going to be really difficult to make that argument for the artist to put up a uh, ten thousand dollar sculpture and have them be liable for for anything and still want them to participate in our program. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to think creatively on how we move forward to make this program successful. Now, if we own the piece, which means we don't do rotating. Yeah. Now there's still, you know, there's still the issue of deductible, but then there's then it's us. And it's up to us to mm -hmm. fix or to employ the artist again to fix it. Mm -hmm. um, the rotating part of it really well, fabulous, really got us stuck. Is there a way? That we can like sell the artwork to the city temporarily. I was just thinking. Um, we went. We, we, we went, talked about. We that talked about that. About that. <laughs> to what? To what ends? Um, to that didn't get us out of the. Uh, it doesn't work. Okay. No. Because I mean that'd be great to just buy artwork, but works, that's a huge cost. And then that's a problem. Isn't that a problem for the artists? And isn't that a problem for insurance too? So if we bought the artwork for three hundred dollars and it, let's just take the number you just mentioned, seven thousand dollar piece. That makes no sense. Right. Or five hundred dollars or seven hundred dollars. Seven thousand dollars. Seven thousand, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. So, so there's got there's gotta be uh, not reinventing the wheel. The wheel's gotta be out there. You know what I mean? What are other cities doing? Um so we 
looked into that too. I mean, literally, we have been around the block, down in the basement, mm -hmm. up in the penthouse, mm -hmm. around the block again. Um, it's been very, very difficult for us to find a solution that makes sense in the way that the PAC had er originally conceived of the rotating program. So we maybe just need to change the program. That is a possibility. In order to make something happen. We could actually just put permanent pieces on those pads. But We'd have to buy them, though. I mean, yes. Yeah, well, we can't afford I mean, that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, it could. We we could. Well, but let me just fundraising. So fundraising is an issue. This needs to have funding, yeah. and people like to fund things. Yeah, not just programs. And not just people who run programs. Mm -hmm. They like to run things. Um, so I I see that having permanent pieces, especially since some of the pads are in neighborhoods. Irwin, 12, uh, you know, your piece looks great on 12th and Mason. And how tall is your piece? Uh, I think it's like eight feet. Oh, it's eight feet? Oh, it's only eight feet, okay. Um, it's wide, though. It hangs off the pad, like go by a foot in mm -hmm. one direction. So, but it's, I mean, size. so bigger, I mean, so, I mean, we could conceivably think about doing that. We um, have philanthropists who haven't they made like public walkways with their names out of there, you know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If there was a a Resch gallery, public gallery, I don't you know what I mean? I'm just reaching here, but if, if they may be open to one to put their name on. It, it, it could be, but I mean, like I said, if you're conceiving of a rotating program oh. versus a permanent program. Right. The idea of a rotating per, uh, program, I mean, this, this is not, I didn't conceive of that idea at all. Like that's existing all over the world. And that's a way to turn over art in an inexpensive way and have artwork go up. And, uh, but we're just running into an insurance issue. Where yeah. like in, in uh, Eau Claire, they don't have the insurance issue. They have, they're able to, it's, it's not the city entity, it's not the city right. of that's Eau Claire. The difference. And so they're able to, so I wonder why, why, so we just, what makes us different than like, an, uh, uh, like a not-for-profit? Um, I think a big thing is we just don't have the money. Well, well I, I think the nonprofit doesn't have the money either, I would think. I think the difference is the difference between acquiring business insurance, which is what the nonprofit would do, and say, these are what we, this is what we're doing, and we're going to have this insurance, and if it's in a public right of way, we're going to hold the city harmless with our insurance versus the city having that insurance for our own, our own thing. That's, is, is the difference between a nonprofit slash business and the, and the government. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that, uh, if, that doesn't sound very satisfactory, but that's but, what I got. But maybe another solution would be just partnering with a GBNLC or some other organization. They don't, the GBNLC. Or some other organization that you know, could manage this program. With our support. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just can, the government, can the government create their own nonprofit? We are a nonprofit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, there, in other so communities. So, could the government create? Sorry. Ken, so, in other communities, the public arts components are not run in the city. It's like mosaic or it's mm -hmm. gotcha. you know, something else that that uses city's funds gotcha. and that can give the city funds, like and donate to the city. So it's like they're functioning outside. But the GBPAC was established within the city. Mm -hmm for a purpose. It wasn't like right. this, let's just accident. No, it was like we wanted to make the GBPAC part of the government because right. it, was an, uh, it reflected the values of the city. Um, so we just need to find, I mean, we're per potentially we're pioneering new right. ground here. I mean, if, if we can't take that an existing template that works for a city, then we need to find a solution that will make it work because I don't. I, I love the idea of having more permanent work, but the rotating arts programs are like huge all around because of their success at representing large artworks at a low cost. So there, but there are solutions. The solution is there's solutions, right? Mm -hmm. But we can't afford it. But what is that solution, <laughs> right? Is that it, is we need the solution is to buy the art. Is no, no. The no. solution is finding adequate insurance to cover the piece. Right. And right now we don't know what that is because it's never been done. Apparently, like we just don't know what that. We we don't have that option on the table. Mm 
But if we bought the piece, then it's part of the city's, and you know. Okay, so could we make a contract where we buy the piece for a buck for one no. year? No, we just talked about that. We can't do that. So we have. It doesn't we make have, sense because yes. then you're buying a piece for a buck. Then you're gonna and it, let's say it's a seven thousand dollar piece. We bought it for a buck, and then we're like, oh, it got damaged, you know, by a hailstorm. And then we go to the insurance company and we say, well, you know, we need to pay for this, and this is valued they, at seven thousand dollars. But wait a minute, you paid a dollar for it. And remember, art is there's some there's some intrinsic value to art. I mean, intrinsic monetary value, but then there's also a what was it sold for? Just like right. real estate. Yeah. But what if it's a donation? Then you can kind of claim it as whatever. I don't know that that works. I don't know that that. That seems too it. sketchy. Also, it's like it should just yeah, be yeah. like this is a rotating arts program. Right. We, we and, and and we have the insurance. I mean, we want the insurance. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's just finding that insurance company. Correct. Yeah. Is that was that? We well, there's not one in Wisconsin. No, no. I I know. I'm just saying. But if that would be some of the issues if we had an insurance company. But. So my insurance provider, I told her the situation of how it works, and she, she provided an option that was inexpensive. But if we're not able to contract with like State Farm, which is my insurance, if we're not able just to buy a policy that's from the city. Right, because that's, and we looked into that as well, because that's you buying the insurance as a business owner. No, it would be the city. Right, but we're the government. We're it, it, I, I believe, and Nate would be better mm -hmm. in this detail. Because if, if, the, if State Farm was able to offer an insurance policy to the city that would cover each pad up to, I think it was $10,000, and it costs like less than $100 per pad a year. Well, then I think maybe what you're talking about is gap insurance. I don't know. So gap insurance, and I don't know that we asked, because once we, we did ask, we asked all around, we asked all kinds of folks. I'm not sure that we asked about gap insurance. And so gap insurance is what you have in order to make up the gap between the incident, your loss, and the deductible. So um, I believe it is called gap insurance. And so like if you have, um, so Medicare had these issues. 15 years ago when it was redone and people had gaps in their coverage and so they bought an additional insurance to cover the gap between your need and the and where the deductible starts. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that we looked into gap insurance to cover that deductible. Um, but yeah, I think that's worth exploring. Investigating? Okay. So if I had... Um, my agent reach out to Nate, would that probably consolidate some time? Well, we, like I said, we already explored that. There was a reason why that didn't work. But not with the gap idea. Not with the gap idea. So, so we should. And we, uh, we uh, and here's the thing, the city actually has an insurance company. We have a couple. So, uh, I did reach out to one of our, our major insurer and I, I, I did not get an answer back. Okay. So I think it's worth exploring gap insurance. This is critical to the success of the um, Rotating. Rotating Arts program. Like it, it's, it's really, and we have two pieces up, almost, well, three is going to be temporary, even at a short scale, but we need to find insurance. You know, so not that I want to drag this process out anymore, because like Celestine said, we've been researching this for a year. Yeah. <laughs> With the pieces that you guys have chosen currently, we are going to be set for a year. So this we're is an issue that we need to decide. Yeah. But we need to. Our pads minutes. are filled for a year. Yeah. Uh, we have um, we have the three pyramids that are going on, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. And those will stay there for a year. Yeah. Okay, but I thought those were under the like the temporary pyramids are there until a sculpture comes. Right. The funds that you guys spent on those pyramids took the place of funding a sculpture. Because we weren't getting sculptures in, we need something to fill those pads. Okay. So those are there for a year because those 500 that could have gone for a sculpture it went for that pyramid for the year. Okay. It's, it's temporary in the sense that we didn't have, like we weren't getting sculptures in, but we needed something on there. Yes, okay. So, and we own them, and that's how we got around it. Mm -hmm. Because if it gets damaged, it gets damaged. Okay. 
as compared to a, someone's really nice sculpture. So okay, I mean, this okay. is definitely like we can look into the gap insurance and stuff, but like Celestine said, fundraising is what. Okay. Apparently, uh, I'm a full time fundraiser because that's what some people think. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Which really gets in the way of my full-time art critic time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but we... So what are the updates with fundraising? Not that our fundraising cabinet was not helpful. They were very helpful in providing suggestions and giving me um, helpful tips for contacts. But I need names of people who can get me at the table with people who have dollars. Okay. I need those connections. So we it's not that we don't have a history or we don't have photo like we can we can gather that we have a case mm -hmm. we just put up like five pieces last month mm -hmm. but I need someone to get me at that table so, so uh, things like the Chamber of Commerce and their board members I actually just had a meeting with someone from there yesterday but they bailed on me mm -hmm. so I'm working on that okay. um, and so we're working on grants this grants that I'm applying for we'll find out from the uh, Green Bay Packer Foundation next month on that one, but we also need to just we need to start asking people for money. So I think we should continue the cabinet uh, meetings because absolutely. Yeah. But I need people who are going to be willing to give that ask. And then maybe we need to make that more clear. Then you need to make that clear at those meetings. Is that I think we need new names. Okay. So let's have, have you tried Paul Belschner? No, but that name was given to me. So I, I know Paul. Um, I think he would be interested. He's a pretty busy guy, but right. That's why I did suggest him for the board because I know I, I kind of talked to him about it, and he's too busy. But but he, for he the might be able to put it on to some finance cabinet. Is that what we're calling? So it doesn't sound like fundraising. <laughs> I, I do know that uh, you know there's Resh. Apparently, his wife. We have explored that already. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, Sharon Rush, she was at the concert last night and he spoke yeah. about us. So. Oh, okay. But I I can't make that. Like, I can't just reach out to Sharon Rush. Be like, right. hey, right. I work in public art and it's a really great thing for the community. Can I have money? Mm -hmm. Like, I need someone who. Like, an introductory letter on that. Yeah. Okay. I need someone who has a connection with her and then can vouch for us. So we have how many people on the fundraising or the finance cabinet right now? Is it? It was five. Five that were coming. Okay. So we had talked about making that more robust into like eight to ten or something. Yeah. That was a goal. So we need some members on there that can actually help do those asks. So that's not that's not just that's not an easy thing to do. You know, you have to find somebody who can... What about inviting Sharon Resch to the join the board? Do you know her? Do you have, do you have to really know? I mean, I'm trying to think It about helps if you have, like, a personal contact, like, who can make that ask. Um, so, so we have five people on the finance cabinet, but this, these are the people that ha are, have been and are going to help think about how we how we fund the GBPAC and they're the people that are going to help you, Laura. So um, we, if we need to ask for more people to sit on the board, then that's good. I need people who can give me names. Okay. And not just names, but meetings. Because the people that we have on the cabinet now, they're incredibly helpful with editing documents and giving me suggestions on how to go about it. But they're n like, they there's a gap between how to go about it and doing it. Maybe get some gap insurance. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. okay, so what are some solutions? What do you think we can ask? We need to find people who work in money or who, like, people who deal with money. Paul, Paul, he I know he's busy, busy, but I think, you know. Or if Paul knows someone who also, like. Yeah, he might. I need someone who's willing to make that ask. Okay, so um, I can approach Paul and ask to see if he'll, he'll sit on the board of the Finance Commission, or the Finance Cabinet. Um, who else? I mean, we, we want to get, I, I can see that, you know, this is a, a difficult 
thing to do, uh, but this is this is priority. So um, we have to find we have to make this successful. Right. So, are there unlikely partners that we can approach? You know, um, the Schreibers, the you know, um, Lambeau Fields got Johnsonville. I mean, you know, they got these unlikely partners. You know what I mean? They're, I don't know if we get these. Well, Lambo hasn't, the Packers haven't been helpful in my perspective of uh, well, we'll see. funding we arts related projects. But we might get a grant from the next one. We don't know. Mm -hmm. um. Okay, so right now we have priority in finding. Uh, potentially five more seats at the uh, fundraising cabinet, found the finance cabinet. So we need to probably put another, s we schedule another appointment uh, where we can, uh, where the finance committee gets together and talk stuff out um, because those are people that can potentially help. I mean, we haven't had a meeting for a while, so it'd be a good idea to restart those up, um, specifically if we're gonna try to find more people to sit on it. So you, you just, it really doesn't work to go cold then? Like if you've got like a CEO from a bank or you just write him a letter? That, that's, or it like does that? work. I mean, we, we have to be able to uh, do that also. So um, I, you don't have enough time to do that. Are you looking for people to help do that? Like well, I've developed call? a letter of inquiry or like a yeah, I guess a letter of inquiry mm -hmm. and just reaching out that can be sent out to well, let's send out the thousand. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that's it. Every yeah. corner in the universe, if we get two bites, <laughs> we definitely get more traction if we had an individual who has a relationship with somebody who has the capacity to write a check. And so I think that is where we should focus our efforts rather than just sending out letters and making cold calls. And I think that's what you're trying to do. So who that that's what I've been be? told. Well, I've gotten dragged around a lot back and forth between yeah. what I should be doing and what I should be doing, and right. no, not that. Like you need to be doing this. Um, but just not 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 so much an ask, but to see if we can get them on the finance board of the Public Arts Commission. So I, it sounds like we're looking for two different things. We're, we're looking for people to do the asking, right. and then we're looking for people to donate money. And right. But if we get them, if we get someone who's got those connections. Mm -hmm on the finance board, then you've got your letter of Okay. Info. So, 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 so what, what, what potential, I'm sorry, uh, uh, um, do you know Anne Frank, do you know anybody know Anne France uh, from NWTC? She, uh, every year I produce 12 films for the manufacturing industry. She has this whole list of manufacturers. They are makers. I can see the connection, you know what I mean? Unlikely, con I'm always looking around. So her name is Anne France, she's at NWTC. To say Alex Zacharias told me, hey, you know, uh, she's really approachable and she has all these contacts with all our area manufacturers. There might be a way to make, okay, because they're makers. So we can ask her if she wants to sit on the, the or, or, at, uh, or tell her what we're doing and just be blunt, we need money. Just be blunt. Well, I think offering her a position might, I mean, why and that, and that, and why And that, that as well. So we're looking for five people. That means we probably have to ask 30. Um, because a lot of people are going to say no. So um, I think that's, that's, that's one way we can uh, help is to try to find a, a list of people to um, ask to sit on the cabinet you can brainstorm because you're having trouble actually making the ask uh, so we need to either find people to do that ask or we need to help find people to introduce you to do the ask so uh, if we're not able to do that with the five people that we have right now currently then we need to find five more which means we got to ask 30 so we just have to ask a lot of people to get on to this um, to this Cabinet. Yeah. I, Maybe call on I don't Anne want this to be any slight or anything to the people we have in the cabinet currently. They've been incredibly helpful. Yep. Right. It's right. 
they it's it's something that they're not willing to do and that's completely fine mm -hmm. but I, I need those people who are willing to ask right okay so I think we should uh, schedule another meeting with the Finance Committee and we can just lay down what you need this is the things that I need and if you're able to do it great if you're not able to do it then, then or do they know you? someone who could also do you know people that would work with we, we need to find five more people let's get ten let's get ten people on the um, the finance cabinet and um, you know one one way to help this sounds this sounds tacky but like if you if you meet at a coffee shop and the GBPAC f like funds coffee for the, for a meeting or something that draws people that makes you come like that, maybe that's something we should consider is, is buying coffee for the finance committee or like meeting here and supplementing coffee I mean, it sounds stupid but really no. that yields results like, yeah so um, yeah. We, we need to get people at the table to talk about this it sounds like to help Laura make that ask or to introduce Laura to an ask. Does that sound right, Laura? Okay. So um, I got I got one person I'm going to ask. Maybe can we all think of somebody we can we can ask and make that happen this week? Because you stole mine. So I'm going to call Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I just I don't know anybody. I'm afraid. I'm you know a lot of people. And I can't I won't accept that. If you just go around and keep telling people, hey go check out that mural, we put it up. Help spread the word. Yeah. We need to talk Invite about people to our new Facebook page. We all know what, what we do with the GBPAC and we can all talk about how public arts affects Green Bay through um, uh, attracting and retaining youth beautification, quality of life, all those types of things have statistical data to suggest that the more art we have, the better those things get. Yep. So, so that's kind of important in that folder that we already developed. So yep. just using that. That's that's a good point. Maybe we should each have like a few of those packets to carry around with us that we can um, can we do that? Or we can forward. Can we get a few of those uh, folders? Mm -hmm. Okay. That'd be good, just to have a, a document that we can reference as we're making the pitch, so to speak. Okay, anything else about the fundraising update, Laura? Um, I just reached out to Georgia Pacific yesterday, so, because they have their granting date <coughs> ending pretty soon, so I wanted to ask them about that. Okay. Um, Hopefully we'll get soup. I'm also compiling an application for Give Big, which also is ending this month. So. Okay. Um, yeah. One thing that I'm also focusing on that's not, I'm going to end on a good note because I get a little angsty about this. Um, one thing that's exciting that I just found out about last week is called Make Music Winter. It's free. Uh huh? <laughs> music uh, it's basically a celebration on December 21st, uh, the shortest day of the year. Uh, so I need to reach out to some. I need to reach so out. So they're short pieces. Yeah. Well, I mean, it would need to be short because it's cold music during that time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna look into hopefully having something like that, uh, so we can put our name on it. Cool. Also. Make music winter December 21st. Okay. I will keep you updated on the progress. That's also just another little project. Anything else? Um, just happy birthday to us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Who gets the spanking? <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next meeting is on Wednesday, November 28th, 2018, 8 o'clock right here. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Do we need to uh, motion to, to receive place on file the reports or? No. Okay, motion to adjourn? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Laura. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Laura.